So now we're going to focus on forces acting on multiple objects. And honestly, I think this is one of the toughest concepts in all of physics, especially physics with forces, because, well, for lack of a better term, we're dealing with multiple objects here. The physics is going to get harder. And I think one thing that it is, I think the reason it is so difficult is because students don't realize that the secret to dealing with multiple objects is that we need to treat each object with its own free body diagram and its own set of net force equations. And here's what I mean by that. Let's jump into an example. Let's say I have a crate A touching a crate B, as seen here, with a 100 Newton force acting on crate A. And we can give the mass of A as 10 kilograms and the mass of B as five kilograms, the numbers don't matter. What's important is that we have a 100 Newton force acting on box A and box A is touching box B and both of them are accelerating to the right. And if I were to ask the question, what is the force of A on B? If that were the question, here's how we would solve it. Very first thing we would do is write a free body diagram. And since we have multiple objects, we really want to make separate free body diagrams for each object. That's the first thing we're going to do. We have box A. We think about what forces are acting on box A. We have gravity going down and a normal force going up. I'll tell you right now, those two forces aren't really going to matter for this problem because one thing we're looking at is force of A on B, which is in the X direction. And a lot of the action for this problem is going on in the x direction. There's no reason to really include the y direction, but I'll include it just for the sake of including it. And then we have a 100 Newton force pulling to the right. Any other force is acting on box A. Although it doesn't seem like it at first, we're going to jump into box B and see why there actually is a force on box A. What are the forces acting on box B? Once again, we have force of gravity going down, mg, a normal force, fn, going up. And then there's a force pointing to the right, and that force is the force of crate A on crate B, which is actually the answer to our question, if we can find this. So now, think about this. If we have a force A on B pointing to the right on box B, we're going to have a Newton's third law equal and opposite reaction force pointing to the left on box A. So box A is going to have a force F of B on A. And we know the relationship between FA on B and FB on A because they're Newton's third law of forces. They are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. In other words, we know that force of A on B is equal to the force of B on A and they point in the opposite directions. So now, how does that help us? Let's think about what the question is asking for. What is the force of A on B? Typically after we do a free body diagram, it makes sense that we do a sum of forces equation, right? And now, I'll tell you right now, we have three choices to choose from. We can do a free body, I'm sorry, sum of forces equation for box A, crate A. We can do a sum of forces equation for crate B. Or we can do a sum of forces equation for the whole system, both box A and B. And actually, when we were drawing our free body diagrams, I'm also going to include a third free body diagram that draws all the forces acting on all the boxes, at least for the x direction. I'm not going to bother drawing the y direction for this problem. And those are all the forces. And I'm going to tell you, there's a couple ways you can go down. You can literally choose the system. System. You can choose box A or you can choose box B. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Obviously, there's going to be some that are easier than others. And until you get really a feel for it, it really is just a guess and check game. So just for the sake of, you know, guessing, I'm going to start with the system. I'm going to say F net comma X, because we're talking about the X direction comma system. It's going to be all the forces to the right. So think about that. We get the 100 Newton force point to the right plus F A on B points to the right minus the forces point to the left. So minus F B on A, because that points to the left, F B on A. And that's going to equal mass times acceleration. But think about this. 
what's that mass? Is that the mass of crate A? Is it the mass of crate B? Or is it the mass of both? And since we're talking about the system here, we are talking about mass of A plus B, so I'm going to call it M total for now, times acceleration. And one cool thing is that the acceleration of the system is going to be the same as the acceleration of block A, and it's going to be the same as the acceleration of block B. They are all the same acceleration because they're all touching, and it's going to be acceleration in the X direction. Okay? So now we have F net X of the system. Now let's think about what we're solving for. And traditionally we're going to be solving for F A on B, right? That's what the question's asking for. But notice, since F A on B is equal to F B on A, these two are actually going to cancel each other out. Meaning that we're just left with 100 is equal to the total mass. And the total mass is M A plus M B times acceleration in the x direction. Notice we have mass A, we have mass B. We can solve for the acceleration, but does that help us? Does it help us find force A on B? I'll tell you, it doesn't hurt, that's for sure. So let's solve for acceleration first. 100 is equal to mass of A, which is 10, plus mass of B, which is 5, times AX. 100 equals 15 AX. Now let's divide both sides by 15 and we get AX is equal to, it's probably going to be between 6 and 7, 100 divided by 15, yep, 6.7 meters per second squared since it's acceleration. And so now we have the acceleration, how does that help us? We're going to need another sum of forces equation, and we already chose F net of the system. How about next, since we're looking for net force of A on B, why don't we look at box B because that has the force A on B. So we already did F net X of the system. Now let's do F net X of just box B. And when we do that, it's all the forces to the right acting on box B, which is F A on B. So F A on B minus the forces to the left acting on box B, but as we can see there are no forces pointing to the left, there's just one force and it's F A on B. So we just have F A on B and that's going to be equal to mass. What mass? Is it the total mass? No, because remember we're talking about F net on box B, which means we have the mass of box B. So if you ever get confused about which mass you're talking about in the F net equals M A, it's always the mass of the free body diagram that you're looking at at the moment. And right now we're looking at box B. So we have F A on B equals mass times B times acceleration. And again, that's the acceleration in the X direction, which we said was that exact same acceleration from right here. And so that's going to be that 6.7 number. So now we have F A on B is equal to the mass of block B, which we said was 5 times the acceleration of block B, which is 6.7, and that's going to equal F A on B is equal to 33.3 .3 Newtons. And since that's what the question was asking for, that is going to be our final answer. So again, the secret to dealing with multiple objects in physics is first breaking it up into three different free body diagrams, one for object one, one for object two, and one for the system. And if you have more than two objects, of course you're going to need a free body diagram for each object and go from there. Then we need to focus on the sum of forces equation. And regardless of which one you think you should choose, I'll tell you just as a rule of thumb, you should always do the system first because the system is going to have that acceleration and the acceleration is going to be the same for everything. So it's helpful to find the acceleration first and then look at one of the boxes individually to find whatever you're solving for. And that's the secret to solving questions involving multiple objects. My name is Dan the Tutor. Thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, hit me up with an email, danw.tutor at gmail.com. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.